All right, so we want to talk about piecewise defined functions. As the name implies, these are functions, which means every value that you plug in means you only get one value um, as an output. They look kind of complicated because they're made up of a lot of different pieces. For example, here is an example of a piecewise defined function. Now, this function gives you the cost, C, based on the age of a person who's going to see a movie. And so you know that if you go to the movies, depending on how old you are in certain other conditions, it's going to determine how much you pay. So for example, if you take a child who is less than two years old, they get in for free. If you take a child uh, who is, say, they've already turned two, but they are not quite a teenager, then they pay $10.69. And then if you're between the ages of 13 and not quite 60, it's going to be $13.69, and then anybody who is 60 or over will pay $12.69 because they get that big dollar discount per ticket. But the thing is, every person that goes into the theater is only going to pay one price per person, right? So if you've got a teenager, if you've got a young child, if you have an infant, they each pay a different price. You know, you pay this, or maybe your grandparents pay this, it's, it's one price. So if I say, what is the cost of somebody who is 25 years old? Well, their cost for going to see a movie, they fall into this particular bracket right here. And so their cost would be $13.69. If you were to say, okay, what is the cost of somebody who is 12? Well, 12 is not in this range because they're not between 0 and 2, but they are here. They are bigger than 2 and less than 13, so the cost of a 12-year-old will be ten dollars and sixty nine cents All right that's just how piecewise defined functions work each value that you plug in you get one value back out uh, let's take something that's a little bit not so much a real world problem problem but just um, just another function okay so let's look at f of x is equal to x plus 5 if x is less than or equal to 2 and then f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 if x is greater than 2. Now one of the things that we can do to help ourselves out to really understand what's going on in this problem is to do a number line. Now I do a number line for our input values and I've got this critical value that's happening right here when x is equal to 2. So you know me, you know that I like to color code things. So I'm going to let this guy be pink and the second piece be blue. So what I'm going to do is just above this number line I'm going to do each of these pieces so we can see what parts of the number line go into which part of the function. So this says x plus 5 is if x is less than or equal to 2. So I could put a bracket here, and I'm going to the left. And so that's going to indicate those values that we get plugged into x plus 5. And the other part, negative 2x plus 1 is when x is greater than 2. So greater than 2 would be parentheses here, going out to the right. And so that's negative 2x plus 1. And again, the reason I like to do this number line is because you can look at any number here that's on the number line and know exactly where it's supposed to go. With the piecewise defined function, there's never going to be any overlap. Okay? These guys are going to have their own separate regions. So if I ask you to evaluate f of negative 8, Okay. Negative 8 falls over here on the number line, and so it falls under the pink part of this piecewise defined function. So we would do negative 8 plus 5, and then just uh, work this out. Negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. Now you might ask, wait, wait, shouldn't I plug it into here? And the answer is no. Each value that you plug into a function, you get one output value. And so you have to find which of these pieces will accept negative 8. See, this first part will accept values of x that are less than or equal to 2. 
The second part will accept values of x, your input values that are greater than 2. So since negative 8 satisfies this condition, you plug them into that part. If we do f of 9, 9 on the number line falls over here underneath the realm of, of, of the blue piece that we have. So we're going to say negative 2 times, we're plugging in 9, plus 1. Okay, again, this is my input value. We figure out which one of these does it satisfy. 9 is not bigger than or equal to 2, but 9 is, oh, it's not less than or equal to 2, excuse me, but 9 is greater than 2. So it gets plugged into the second part right here. And then we just work this out. We get negative 18 plus 1, and we get negative 17. Uh, one of the things I do need to point out to you is that the output doesn't really matter. All that matters with the output is that you just get one of those outputs. You don't get multiple ones. But I don't want you to look at this and say, oh, I've got negative 17, but negative 17 isn't bigger than 2. Well, of course it's not, but we don't really care about that. And the reason we don't care so much about that is because this is an output value. This is a y value, not an x value. So don't try to put this in here and replace x with that, because it doesn't make any sense. This is your y value. You plugged in 9, you got a negative 17. And if I do f of 2, see f of 2 lands right here. Okay, It's right here, so you have to figure out is it in the pink, or is it in the blue, or is it nowhere? Well, since we are equal to 2, we plug it into the piece that allows us to be equal to 2, which is the first part. So we replace the x in the first part of that piece was to find function with 2, and we do the work, and we just get 7, like that. And that's really all there is to it. Draw a number line and put in those pieces so that you can see where everything goes. Now in the next video, we're going to see what the graph of this guy looks like. So stick around.